Welcome back. Uh, I wanted to tell you that this video you're going to see I recorded uh, previously, um, and I wanted to let you know that you know that this video is about uh, a lot of the items that you're going to want to check and that you're going to need to know about before you purchase uh, a C4 Corvette uh, for doing whatever you want with it. Um, I want to let you know that uh, this is all items that I've come across. Well, rebuilding my vets, my C4s, uh, items that I've seen not only in my 85s, but in my 88, which is right over there behind me, or nope, not behind me, behind you. <laughs> anyway, um, and I want you to enjoy the video. Thank you very much, and smash that like button. It really does help out the channel, and if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. Thank you again, and enjoy. Hi, today I wanted to go over some of the things to look for when you go out and purchase your C4 Corvette. Uh, what you need to understand is these cars are 25 to 35 years old and that there's going to be a lot of things that even a stored Corvette is going to have issues with just because of time. Now granted a lot of these Corvettes that you're going to find on Craigslist and Facebook Marketplace are going to be in horrible condition. And there's going to be a few that are priced for the condition they're in all the way down. So th this Corvette I got off Facebook Marketplace and the uh, red C485 Corvette that I have, I got that off Craigslist. So uh, in the maroon uh, 88 Corvette I got, I got that off Facebook Marketplace as well. So a lot of photos that you're going to see of these cars for sale are going to hide a lot of things. When you go out to look at these cars, you're going to need to go through quite a few items on the car to make sure that it's um, worth it. So I'm going to try and save you some time and money. Uh, starting with the engine. Check the fluids. If the oil smells burnt, that could be um, mechanical issues within the engine and or um, your rings are gone on the pistons. Uh, if you see or smell antifreeze, um, either leaking out of the engine or steam from the side of the engine, that's usually an antifreeze leak. Uh, a lot of times on these engines what happens is when they were sitting is the freeze plugs on the engines corroded um, or if they use the wrong antifreeze on these uh, the freeze plugs corroded and the heater core corroded and at one point in time after pressurizing coming up the temperature it just let loose on the plug that's what um, on the maroon Corvette that's over there uh, I'm rebuilding the engine on that and that's exactly what happened uh, on that. It has an antifreeze leak uh, and the cores and the uh, freeze plugs were corroded away, a couple of them. Uh, and I knew that when I bought it, so it's not an issue to me because I knew what it was when I was going into it. Anyway, check the color of the antifreeze. Check the oil and its color and its smell. If it smells burnt and you don't want to do an engine rebuild, walk away. Transmission, check the fluid on level ground. Does it smell burnt? If it smells burnt, you're going to be looking at transmission work need to be done. Um, and check uh, the condition of the hoses that come from the radiator. Check the condition of the power steering reservoir and pump and its hoses. Uh, I got lucky on the red one. I just had to tighten the reservoir's uh, hose connections and my power steering fluid leak went away. Check the brake master cylinder reservoirs. If there's any color in your brake, brake fluid, like brown, chocolate syrup looking, it needs to be flushed. Your brakes will need to be flushed. You can see the video that I've created on how to flush the brakes, uh, brake fluid from your vet uh, on the channel. Um, 
when you go to start it, does it start up right away? Or do you have, or did the owner say, yeah, just turn the key on, wait a few seconds, and then start it? That means it's priming on the, pr the fuel rail. That means you have a pressure leak somewhere for the fuel rail. Most likely it's the pump in the gas tank that's allowing the fuel to depressurize and come back to the tank or, or somehow drain it. Or you have an open or stuck open uh, injector that's releasing all the pressure when you shut it off. Um, it could be any number of those things. Um, your fuel filter on these is right down under here next to the frame, uh, frame rail on this side. Uh, check the, the condition of that. Does it look like it's been replaced or is it old, crusty, and covered in surface rust? Um, you're going to want to check the drive axle by jacking it up, grabbing hold of the drive axle, and turning it. If you hear clunk, 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 or click, 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 you could have bad universals or the tail of the transmission could be a problem in the tail of the transmission. There's a piece that goes on the transmission on the tail um, that you're going to have to check. Uh, if you see transmission fluid leaking from the pan or from the bell housing or from the rear of the transmission, you're going to have to check that uh, and replace those seals. On this one I did a seal and filter and that solved my transmission leaking problem. On the red 85 Corvette, I just had to tighten the transmission bolts and then the leak went away. Check around the top of the gas tank uh, looking for rust. If it's really rusty around uh, the top of the gas tank, that usually means that rust has gotten into uh, the actual tank and or water has been over time pooling on top of the tank and that's not a good sign. Look for surface rust on the outside of the tank. If the rubber safety boot uh, in the back isn't there, and basically there's a rubber boot that goes around the gas tank filler neck and it moves water and other items away from the tank down a tube and down to the ground. If that rubber mat isn't there, that means that everything has been pouring on top of that tank. If the tube has been clogged, that'll back up with water and get on top of the tank and rust it. You don't want rust inside your gas tank. Um, the rear differential, you want to check the half shafts coming out of that by jacking the car up, grabbing hold of each side of the, one of the wheels and going like turning the wheel and listening for clicks and clunks in that. Um, you're going to want to put it in neutral and spin the wheel and listen for any uh, clicks or clunks inside of the actual differential. Uh, when checking the engine, uh, you want to listen to the engine noises when it's running. If you have a mechanic stethoscope, great. If you don't have a mechanic steth stethoscope, go buy a cheap long screwdriver. Take that screwdriver, put it on top of part of the engine, take the other piece, and put it on your ear. You will be able to hear what's going on in the engine in that general location through that. And you can move it and you can tell where things are clicking, clacking, um, and wrapping within the engine by that method. Uh, if you've got squeals in the front, uh, a lot of times it came from the idler pulley, at least on this car and on my red one. It came from the idler pulley. Uh, there was also there was also an, a worn out air pump on the gray Corvette that I had to get a replacement for off eBay. Uh, the bearings inside the air pump had just been shot and um, I'm still looking for a place to rebuild them. So I had to replace that. Uh, other things is does the AC work? Has the AC been converted to a more modern AC pump and system. Does the heater core work? Does the heating work in the car? Does the fan on the heater control uh, or environmental control system work? You know, uh, does it low to high? Does the rear defroster work? Is the rear defroster connected? 
uh, are the wires soldered properly to the rear defroster lines in the window. Uh, then <coughs> getting to the interior. The interior is not cheap. If you're going to be looking at doing a bunch of interior work, you're going to have to spend about 800 bucks on carpets. You're going to have to spend about uh, 500 per door panel, complete door panel. Then you're going to have uh, the door basil and then uh, the actual door handle. Uh, inside the window strips, if the outside strips are cracked and stuff, you're going to have to replace them. I got door panels that came complete with that weather strip. You're going to have to look at... Um, the felt window track blocks in the door. Make sure that they aren't worn away, broken, or misaligned so your windows are closed. You're going to have to look at the weather stripping and see if it's cracked all the way around in every bit of weather stripping. That means on the rear hatch, around the target top, around the window, and around the headliner, and around the door. In the firewall, in the cowl, there are weep holes that you're going to have to clean out. If you don't clean them out, it builds up with water. There is also body putty put in between the pieces of body panel when they were assembling this car at the factory. Most likely after 25 to 35 years, that's all cracked apart. You're going to have to fill those in to keep water from seeping in and getting into the interior of the car. You're going to, you're going to have to clean out the call. That's of all the dirt, leaves, seeds, whatever, that's fallen in there over time. Also can check the condition of your wipers. Do they go down all the way? Are they hidden behind here, like so? Uh, mine pop up here. I'm okay with it. On the red one, they go down all the way. On this one, they stick up a little bit right there at the end. I'm okay with that. Uh, you want to check your headlights to make sure that they uh, rotate up. Uh, if they don't, or like one goes up, one doesn't, check the wiring connections inside the nose cone uh, or inside the nose well. And uh, on this one, when the passenger one didn't want to go up, it was a loose wire connector on the connection. Um, your radiator, if you're running into overheating while you're driving, there's uh, an air dam, and as you, if you bought one or know it, the radiator sits at an angle, the air dam allows air to come in from underneath the front of the car. What happens is that fills up with leaves and other crud, like, you know, the plastic bags that you sometimes find floating on the road and you try and avoid because you don't want it in your radiator. <coughs> if you're running into overheating problems and you have enough antifreeze in there and the fan on the car is turning on at the proper temperature, depending on what you have on the engine for the temperature sensor that operates the electric fans, check that and clean it out. That's the other thing. When this is running, make sure that the radiator fans turn on. You don't want to have to replace a bad temperature sensor on these. Make sure that the oil gauge is reading right. Make sure that the oil pressure sending unit is, is correct. And the reason I ask that is to get to them, you got to take the distributor out because it's behind uh, the motor back here uh, on, the, on the rear of the engine above the transmission. Uh, when you take it out for a test drive, you want to not only check the engine, but you also want to check the transmission to make sure that it shifts properly. So what you want to do is you want to stick it, if it's an automatic, stick it in an overdrive and step on the gas and slowly pick up. You should feel it shift from first to second to drive to overdrive nice and smoothly and you know, you, you don't hear a clunk uh, in between the shifting. Uh, it doesn't go into the next gear really hard. Um, when you're slowing down, you should also feel that as it slows down, that it goes into the next gear nice and smoothly as it goes down as you're coming to a stop. That'll also check the brakes. When you're out there doing your drive and testing, you want to make sure you check the braking. You also want to know that if you, when you're turning turns, that the car doesn't do this like a boat on water. 
if it's doing this, then you're going to look, be looking at shocks and other items within the suspension. If you're turning and you and it like uh, it binds at one spot for a little bit, that could be a uh, bad rack and pinion. When you're going out to look at one of these cars, make sure you look at the rims and tires. If they're unevenly worn, uh, you're definitely going to have to replace those tires. Um, and that's usually an indication that you're going to need an alignment. Uh, the rims, I got lucky with these. The previous owner had sent them out to get them uh, redone. And they look fantastic. A lot of times you're going to come across these cars with the rims are pitted and uh, corroded. And, and it's just not nice looking. I wouldn't try spending the money to get rims like these or get them redone unless you really want to. It's not cheap. Interior. <coughs> On the interior, you're definitely going to be spending some money. Uh, if the interior needs to be redone, like the carpets of every single one that I've ever had, look absolutely horrible. And if you've watched the video of me replacing the carpets in this one, you can see that, that they look absolutely horrible. And that's about 800 bucks just for the complete carpet set. And then there's the door panels and uh, the plastic kick panel. And then there's the weather stripping. And then there's, and the list goes on. So if you're planning on trying to get one of these, thinking that it's neat to do a project on one of them, you better understand that that cheap price is because the person before you has looked at what it's going to cost to get it to daily driver status. If you like this video, please smash that like button. And if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe because it really does help out the channel and the YouTube algorithm. I want to thank you for watching and you have a great day. Stay safe.